All right, so next thing we need to do, let's practice it up, okay? So we're gonna convert 15 inches to meters using dimensional analysis. So now I'm gonna go to the board and we're gonna work this thing out. So step one, what do I have? What problem or what information am I given? So I'm given 15 inches. So I start with 15 inches. And now the process of dimensional analysis is we want to find conversion factors that allow us to convert. So I'm gonna set up a fraction in parentheses and I'm going to find some sort of equality that works to find for 15 inches, okay? So since I want to get rid of inches, that has to go down so it can cancel out mathematically. So what do I know that can take me from inches closest, closer to meters, okay? Oh, wait a minute. We just said that. We said that there's 2.54 centimeters equals one inch. So we have an equality that works for us. This is something that you would have in your brain. Okay, so the one inch is here, the 2.54 centimeters we put up here. Okay, so we put the two as a fraction, okay, because if these two things equal each other, and if I take 2.54 centimeters and divide it by one inch, that would equal one, because you're dividing by two things that are equal, right? Because if x equals x, so x divided by x equals one, same thing here, this equals that, so that divided by that equals one. Okay. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking this number and I'm multiplying it by a conversion factor to convert my units. Now we know inches is in the bottom because we want that to cancel out mathematically. Okay, so the inches cancel here. Now my next step is to get from centimeters to whatever I think is next. Well, in this case, I can go right to meters. So I have centimeters here. I'm going to put centimeters down, which I know that there's 100 centimeters for every one meter. Okay, and then I wanted to take a look and say, okay, am I done? Well, look, I have meters now, and I wanted my answer in meters. So this value now matches what I want, so then the dimension analysis is done. So mathematically, what I need to do is take 15 times 2.54 divided by 1 times 1 divided by 100. Okay, so if I plug that into the uh, trusty old calculator, and I solve that, we would get... 0.381 meters, okay? This process can be repeated over and over and over again for any of our um, conversions, okay? Whether they be simple ones, whether they be more complex ones, whatever it is, okay? So the next one down, convert 25 kilograms to nanograms, okay? So in this problem, we have kilograms and nanograms. Now, they're both in the same SI system, but it may take us a couple steps to get through it, okay? So let's take a look and see how that one works out. So I want 25 kilograms, and I want to convert to nano grams, okay? So my first step is, I know kilograms and grams relationship, so I'm gonna use the kilogram to gram relationship. So I know that for every one kilogram, I have a thousand grams, okay? Kilograms cancels, I now have grams. And I know that for every one gram, I have 10 to the ninth power nanograms, okay? This is one of those prefixes that we're supposed to know that nano means nine, okay? Now, I have my nanograms, like that, so I can solve, okay? Taking 25 times 1,000 times 10 to the ninth power. And if I do that math, okay, I get 2.50 times 10 to the 13th nanograms. Now, if you notice on the actual problem on the screen, I flipped this, okay? So there's more than one way to set up your conversions. So on the screen, I want 25 kilograms times 1,000, and then I said for every one nanogram, there's 10 to the negative ninth grams. Well, that relationship is the same as saying for every one gram, there's 10 to the ninth nanograms. Okay? Either conversion factor works, either will give me the same answer. Okay? It's just picking the one that works for you. Okay? Now we're going to do the third one on our stream here. If you're flying in a single engine plane at 33 miles per hour, how fast is this in meters per second? Okay? So let's set it up. So I move it at 130 
three miles per hour, okay? Now, miles per hour, which means hours in my denominator. If it makes you feel better, you can put a one down here. That way, there's a number inside there, but you don't really need it, okay? And I want to solve this for, let's see, it tells me meters per second. So that is a meter per second. The prefix for miles is mi, for meters is just m. Okay. Now, because I'm converting miles to meters and hours to seconds, I need to do this in two pieces. Okay. So the first part I'm going to do is I'm going to go from miles to meters. Okay. So I know that there is 5,280. Oops, I don't do that. I know that for every one mile, I have 5,280 feet. Okay, if you don't know that, you may have to look that up. I also know that for every one foot, I get 12 inches. And I know that for every one inch, I have 2.54 centimeters. But I want meters, so my last step, for every 100 centimeters, I want one meter. Okay? Now it takes a lot more steps, but if you look, my miles cancel, my feet cancel, my inches cancel, my centimeters cancel. I have now meters. Okay? However, my hours did not cancel. So right now, if I did my math, my answer would be in meters per hour. I want meters per second. Okay? So I don't need to do another line or anything. I can just start way over here and say, well, hours, for every one hour, I get 60 minutes. And then finally, if I can fit it in here, for every one minute, I have 60 seconds. And seconds is just an S. Okay? So when we have hours in the denominator, we're going to put it up in the numerator to get it to cancel instead. So hours cancels. And they don't need to be by each other. They can be a long ways away. That's okay. Minutes cancel. And now I have seconds there. Okay? Now I have the whole problem set up and I can do my math. Okay? Don't break it up. Do it one big shot. Take 133 times 5,280 times 12, times 2.54, divided by 100, divided by 60, divided by 60, hit enter, and you get your answer, okay? Which should be 59.5 meters per second. All right, so those are our first three practice problems. If we go on to the next one here in our slide, Lake Superior has a volume of 12,100 12, kilometers cubed. What is this volume in milliliters, okay? So now we're dealing with a, dealing with a cubed function. And when we're dealing with cubed functions, that is a little bit more tricky because you have to actually deal with a cube within your math. So let's set it up and see how we work it out. So we end up with 12,100 kilometers cubed. And that's actually a true number that I looked that one up. Okay, so that's Lake Superior. What is that in milliliters? Crazy. Here we go. So I have kilometers cubed. The way of looking at this is what it means is I have kilometers times kilometers times kilometers, which means I got to cancel it one, two, three times for my math to work out properly, okay? So, for every one kilometer cubed, I have a thousand meters cubed, but if I'm going to cube this and cube this, I need to cube these guys here, so cube it and cube it. Essentially, what I'm doing is saying that I have kilometers times kilometers times kilometers. I'm saying for every one kilometer, I get a thousand meters. For one kilometer, I get a thousand meters. For one kilometer, a thousand meters. So since I have it three times, I need to cancel it one, two, three times. So really, what all this is doing here, it's 1,000 per 1, 1,000 per 1, 1,000 per 1, or it's 1,000 times 1,000 times 1,000, which is 1,000 cubed, okay? So because we have to cancel the kilometers three times, we need to have 1,000 in here three times also. So it's 1,000 cubed, not, not 1,000 times 3, 1,000 cubed, okay? This is the part that people skip right here. 
So in that case, you end up with meters times meters times meters, or meters cubed, okay? Now, I can keep that, that same thought process and keep working through. So for every one meter cubed, I get 100 cubed centimeters cubed. And then for every one centimeter cubed, I know that's one milliliter. And that gives me my answer, the milliliters. This one we don't cube because this is a true, this is a volume measurement and not a length measurement. Okay? So now when you do your math, kilometers cancels, meters cancel, centimeters cancel, and you end up with 1,200 or 12,100 times 1,000 cubed times 100 cubed times 1 gives you your answer, okay? You have to cube it. All right, take a look. We get 1.21 times 10 to the 19th milliliters. It's a lot of water, okay? All right, I'm going to stop here. You can go through the, the bottom one on your own, the Dorns and Borks kind of problem. Uh, it just takes you through one that doesn't give you measurements that you're comfortable with, not like centimeters and inches and grams, that kind of stuff. Um, same process as you go through. Once you're done with that one, I'll give you the answer here, Okay. We don't apply significant figures in this one uh, because we don't know what a Dorn or a Bork is, so we just went around to the whole number here. Um, there is more practice on this that you can take a look at and work your way through, so go ahead and pause the video if you want to work through these, and I'm just going to show you the key for each one. So in the first one it says exactly, so since it's exactly 10 feet, we're not going to worry about significant figures, it's not measured here, okay, so 3.048 meters, because if you want to put a basketball hoop up, that matches 10 feet and you don't have a, a measuring tool that's 10 feet, you don't want to round this off, you want it to be exact, okay? And now bottom one here, we're dealing with red light with the wavelength, um, so go ahead and pause the video again if you want to work this one out, and then um, we'll see the answer here in a second. So there you go, working this one out, we get 4.0 times 10 to the negative 10th miles in terms of our length for that one, okay? Now, if you even want more practice, here's three more. You can work on all three of these. Uh, and then I'm going to show you the answers to these, not the actual work on these anymore, because we've done we've shown you the work enough um, for that. So pause the video here and work them out, because when I come back, it's going to be, I'm going to show you all three answers. Okay, so that one should be that, there, and there, if you did those correctly to the right amount of significant figures. Okay? All right, guys, that is our practice in our dimensional analysis. If you have more questions, please let me know.